Okay. So I'm just going to share my screen and show you some pictures of the trees and, and the wood. Um, here we go. Hopefully you can see PowerPoint presentation on the wrong page. <laughs> okay. Can you see that? Trees of Hazel Hill Wood and how to identify trees. Great. So um, just as an introduction, Hazel Hill Wood is a 70 acre ancient woodland site, uh, meaning that the land has been wooded for centuries. Um, it's mostly made up of plantation on ancient woodland site or pause, uh, meaning most of the trees are planted. And the fact that it's had continuous tree cover means that the, the ground floor of the plants underneath the trees have persisted, um, including many ancient woodland indicators like bluebells, wood anemones, uh, wood spurge, wood melic, wood sorrel. They've all got wood in the name. Um, and Hazel Hill Wood has been designated as a local wildlife site and has a diverse range of habitats, including woodland, rides, glades, ponds, um, meadow, ditches, hedgerow, and lots of species make Hazel Hill their home, including trees, but also wildflowers, birds, butterflies, fungi, mammals, amphibians, everything else. So, here is a list of uh, the trees and shrubs of Hazel Hill Wood, the trees that we have here. I'm just going to call them trees from now on because it's easier. Shrubs are just basically smaller trees or woody, woody plants. Um, and this is a pretty, I, I think it's pretty impressive that we've got this many trees in such a small site, 70 acres. Uh, and most of, them, most of them are native. So, um, and the fact that they're native is good from a wildlife conservation perspective because uh, other species have had time, thousands of years to kind of co-evolve with the trees and in some cases become completely dependent on, on, our, on a single species. Uh, so the first few trees in the list here are the kind of most numerous at Hazel Hill Wood, um, Peduncula or English Oak. So this is the common oak that you find across Southern England. Uh, beech, Scots Pine, Douglas Fir, Hornbeam, Silver Birch and Downy Birch. So we've got two species of birch. They're very similar and they hybridise. So I just tend to refer to all as birch. Um, so that's what I will do today. Um, so I mentioned wildlife that can be kind of dependent on our native species. And uh, an example of this would be the purple hair streak butterfly. So lots of caterpillars of moths and butterflies are dependent on just one or sometimes a few different species and they can't they don't eat any other um, plant species and the purple hair streak butterfly feeds on oak leaves um, they're very tricky to spot I'm afraid I haven't got a photo I have seen them here at Hazel Hillwood and um, if you happen to be here in the summer and have a pair of binoculars if you look up um, in the canopies of the oak trees that's where you might see the purple hair streak butterfly because they rarely come down to the ground. Um, and they live their whole life cycle pretty much up in the canopy of the tree. And another example would be the argent and sable moth, um, which is dependent on birch. Um, it does feed on a couple of other species, but nothing else that we have at Hazel Hill Wood. So this caterpillar is even more fussy or even fussier because it won't eat the leaves of these birch trees it only likes really young birch trees um, just a, up to a few years old so uh, I've been looking out for them since I've been working here in the northwest frontier where we've got young birch growing I haven't seen them yet but they have been recorded here before in the past they're nationally scarce and declining so it would be really um, exciting it will be really exciting if and when I do or anyone does spot them um, but, but yeah, it's a, just to give you an idea of why native wildlife can be, native trees can be more important for general, in general terms for wildlife than um, non-native species. So if you've been to Hazel Hill Wood before, you may recognise this part of the wood. Anyone who's been here has probably been in the Hartwood. Um, I'm going to invite you to um, unmute and shout out if you have any idea what species of tree are here. 
I realised from a photo it might be quite tricky, but if you know Hazel Hillwood, you, um, you might be able to have a guess. So anyone like to guess? The Shout Smooth out. Bark oh. Beach. The Very smooth good, bark. Yeah. yeah. Smooth Bark is beach. And then what about this kind of fissured reddish bark? Uh, did I just hear it? Sorry, say that again. <clears throat> Scott's Pine. Scott's Pine. Very good. Well done, Ben. Uh, yes. So the heartwood is mostly made up of Scott's Pine and beach. And you might notice that they're planted in very straight rows. And that's because of the forestry kind of history of Hazel Hillwood um, planted in straight rows um, to make it easier to grow nice, nice tall straight trees and um, and harvest them easily as well. So, uh, yeah, I think it's probably important to say that I'm talking about I'm coming kind of coming from a conservation perspective, a wildlife conservation perspective. Other perspectives would be forestry where tall straight trees are important and the kind of spiritual and cultural um, perspective. So uh, more human, um, human perspectives on which trees are good. So whether they might have been identified as being energy centers of the wood or um, just trees that look nice and impressive might not necessarily be that rich in wildlife. So you might have noticed in the last picture, I'll just go back, that the ground is quite bare on um, in the heartwood. Lots of uh, dead leaves from the beech trees and some holly growing down here. Um, there's not much else growing in terms of um, other plants and that is because of the heavy shade that the beech trees cast. Um, right now in the heartwood we've got these bluebells emerging um, so lots of woodland flowers, or most woodland flowers, are adapted to the deciduous trees um, by coming out and flowering early before the trees have got their leaves back in the spring. So right now, bluebells look like this, and in a few weeks' time, they'll be like this. And you can see in the background here, just the leaves are coming out on the trees, so they're kind of perfectly timed um, by evolving together. Um, live together. So here, this is an area of birch trees, um, kind of further down near the pond-ish. And you can see here that it's very different on the ground underneath the birch trees. That's partly because they're younger trees, but also because the birch leaves just let more light in. There's more kind of bracken and grasses and other wildflowers growing underneath. Um, so. I'm just kind of showing you this to demonstrate that it's really important to have a mix of different species and kind of different ages of trees as well. So finally, here we've got a more open area. We've got mature oak and beech at the back. Um, and this is, you might be able to spot these are birch trees over here, slightly younger. And then we've got some Douglas fir and this open area. So we're maintaining this as a glade. Um, and this area, we tend to see lots of butterflies, dragonflies, um, but also common lizard and a grass snake has been spotted here as well. So we wouldn't find any of those within the woodland. So just kind of um, trying to demonstrate how important it is to have a mosaic or a variety of habitats within the wood. It's getting louder and louder with the birds behind me. <laughs> Lovely. Okay, I think I'm going to come out briefly. Come back to that in a minute. I've got some more quiz questions for you. Uh, Minute. I've got a couple of videos to show you in a minute. Um, the birds are distracting me. So great. It's nice to hear Neil that you're loving the sounds. Um, so if I share a video, I've just got a few videos from the wood. Um, and as well as the kind of different trees and different um, terrestrial habitats, it's also important to have um, water. So the, the ponds and the ditches that obviously all life needs. And also even once the trees have died, the deadwood is really important habitat as well. So um, we don't, we try not to tidy up too much at the wood. 
So hopefully, if I click this, can you see that? Uh -huh. okay. I'm not going to talk over. This was this morning. Just managed to upload it to YouTube in time. So I just thought it might be nice, um, especially for those of you who are used to coming to the wood and haven't been for a while, I thought it might be nice to see some shots of the wood. As I've said before, I am no wild, um, wildlife photographer or filmmaker, so they're not great videos, but um, I've obviously also got this lovely image behind me, but I didn't know what the weather was going to be like. Um, so Ollie really misses it. Yeah. Um, so. Did I say earlier that I'll answer questions later on after we stop recording? Thanks. Okay. <laughs> um, cool. So I'm going to move on to the how to identify trees bit now. Um, I think, firstly, it's important to say you can just enjoy trees without knowing much about them. Um, but if you want to learn more, there are more than just leaves to help you work out what, what species you're looking at. So buds, flowers, fruits, bark, and just even just the shape of the tree. Um, can help help you help you as well, um, as well as the leaves. So the fruits include seeds and nuts. So things that you might recognise as fruits like apples, but also um, nuts like acorns and seeds like ash keys or the helicopters that you see falling to the ground. And so February or winter might seem like a tricky time to start learning how to identify trees, but there are plenty of buds and flowers out already that will help you. And uh, the Woodland Trust website is great for learning more about trees, um, including folklore as well as the more scientific stuff. And it, it takes it takes time to learn these things. Um, I know quite a lot now after nearly 10 years of learning, there's always more to learn, but um, it does help to be able to kind of walk around with someone who knows more about trees um, and learn from them. So I'm going to go back to that. PowerPoint now and show you. I'm going to ask if you can identify more trees from photos. So, any ideas? Feel free to unmute and shout out or write in the chat, and I'll hope that um, Ella might be able to tell me if anyone's answering in the chat. On the left, we've got this lovely pale bark, no leaves on the tree at the minute. Um, silver kind of, birch? Yeah, very good, silver birch. And on the right, this evergreen conifer tree. Deep fissured bark. Any guesses? Yeah, another go with Scots pine. pine. Mm -hmm. uh, pine, Neil, I think you said, very good. Yeah, we've got birch and Scots pine here. Um, two of the common trees at Hazel Hill Wood. Now this one's a bit trickier. So I wanted to take the pictures from, from Hazel Hill Wood rather than elsewhere, but it's quite hard to take a picture of an individual tree when there are lots of other trees because we're in a woodland behind it. So 
not the easiest, but any guesses as to what these species are? They look quite similar. They can look quite similar. The bark looks very similar. The leaves are very different, but obviously we, we can't see that in the winter. Oak tree. Oak tree, yeah, yeah on the left. Um, and oak trees Ash. quite often have branches growing out at 90 degrees. Uh, Ash on the right. Ash on the right, very good. Awesome, I'm impressed. Um, so yeah, oak trees quite often have branches growing out at 90 degrees, um, or sometimes even coming down. Lots of buds come out from um, at the ends of the branches and kind of make this quite um, crowded, I guess, area, whereas the ash trees are more spaced out. I always think of an ash tree as being kind of with its arms up in the air with fingers spread out. Um, and the buds, so if you get a closer look at a twig, you would see, and we'll look at this later on, um, the buds are opposite on the ash. So two buds come out at the same point from a, a twig or a branch and on the oak, they're alternate. So they'll come out at different points on the branch. If that makes sense. We will look at leaves as well in a minute. Right, I've got a few bark, bark quizzes now. Any ideas what these are? I have talked about them before. Silver birch on the left. Yeah. We've looked at this one a few times already. Pine on the right. Yeah, pine. pine on the right. Very good. Another one. Now these are quite similar. Any guesses? One's oak, one ash. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which way around? <laughs> Go on, Neil. Have a guess. <laughs> uh, I reckon the right is ash and the left is oak. That's it. Very good. <laughs> yeah, so the bark is quite similar. Um, the ash, I always think of the ash as being a bit more neat and tidy. Um, these are kind of a similar age tree and when they're younger, they will look very different as well. So um, the oak bark will look very kind of shiny and with little knobbly bits on the ash will be very smooth and slightly kind of orangey. Um, depends where it's growing as well, but they look more different when they're when they're young trees. Okay, another one. Last one, this is the last bark quiz. So the leaves of these trees, sorry if you can hear a chain somewhere in the background. Um, does someone say beech? Yes, beech. Very good, beech on the left. The leaves are quite similar of these two trees, but in this picture, the bark looks really, really different. Any guesses of the right? Um, Hornbeam? Yes! Very good. Well done. Um, yeah, so they kind of grow in quite a similar way and the leaves are quite similar. Um, the difference being that beech have um, smooth edges of the leaf and the hornbeam have toothed edges. We can have a look at that later on. Um, but yeah, the beech bark is, more, uh, is smoother and the hornbeam bark, I think of it as um, like a muscly, veiny arm. Um, this one maybe doesn't show that quite as well as, as some trees show it. They kind of really twist around the trunk, these um, kind of veiny features. Finally, one, I think this is our final quiz, um, tree quiz question. Any ideas what this tree is? Hazel. Hazel, yes, very good. Hazel Hill Woods namesake. Um, this is not a very good picture, but it was a cloudy day when I decided to take it. Um, I hope you, lots of you might have noticed the catkins, the yellow catkins out on the hazel trees at the minute. Um, what you might not have noticed, and I encourage you to go and look for, um, maybe today or in the next couple of weeks, are the female flowers. So the catkins are the male flowers. The female flowers are these teeny tiny bright pink or red um, flowers that come out just above the catkins. And they're really easy to miss, but once you spot them, um, they're amazing. They're really beautiful. Um, so now is the time to have a look for them. Um, I'd love to hear if you do see them for the first time. I only was pointed out, someone pointed them out to me a few years ago and I hadn't seen them before. Um, obviously they've always been there on the hazel trees, but every spring, but I'd never noticed them before. So really cool to see. Great, so, um, if you're 
I had a um, request to record this and put it on YouTube afterwards, so we will do that. So just in case you're watching this afterwards, you can email me if you like with any questions. Um, and if you're here on the call now, then you can um, ask me questions as we go. Um, finally, for the kind of how to identify trees bit, I was just going to show you a really cool resource that I like. We have a few copies of this. Um, printed and laminated at Hazel Hill Wood that we use. So this is from Opal, the Open Air Laboratories project that ran a few years ago. Um, so here, the beach and Hornby were right next to each other, which makes it easy to compare them. So superficially, at first glance, they look very similar. When you look closer, the beech tree's got completely smooth leaves and the hornbeam's got these two edges to the leaves um, and the buds are different and the fruits so that's beech mask and there's all the seeds so you can use this id guide and i can share the link to it um, you can use this just by looking at the pictures of the leaves but you can also use the key so basically just um, involves answering yes and no questions um, so it, you can, if you've got good eyesight, you can read it printed at A4. Um, if you can print it at A3, then probably even better. If the font is really small. So um, if you haven't used a key before, I'll just explain briefly how it works. You just answer yes and no questions. So you start here. Does the tree have needles or scale-like leaves? Yes, conifer. This guy doesn't co cover conifers, so you can't use this to identify conifers. So no, does the tree have simple leaves? And then it's got these handy boxes around which explain what that means. So simple and compound leaves. Um, a simple leaf is just what you kind of think of as a classic leaf. Whereas these leaves, so this is a horse chestnut and an ash leaf here. Hopefully you can see my cursor. Um, this is one leaf and these individual bits that you might think of as leaves are actually leaflets and that's the ash leaf that's one whole leaf made up of lots of leaflets so if we imagine we're doing this for an oak tree if we say does the tree have simple leaves yes it does do the leaves have lobes and here's the box five lobed and unlobed um, we can see that yes an oak leaf does have lobes yes it does are the leaves palmate box three down here pinnate and palmate leaves um, in a pinnate leaf, the veins spread from several places along the leaf stalk. In a palmate leaf, the veins spread from a single point at the top of the leaf stalk. So an oak has a kind of main vein going through the middle with other veins coming off. So it is pinnate. Um, so are the leaves palmate? No. And are the twigs thorny? No. And there we go. It got us, got us to oak leaf. I hope that was helpful to just go through that once. And um, I will share that link in a second in the chat um but that's not the right link um but yeah you can just search opal tree id guide and find that i will share the link in a minute so i'm going to stop recording there i think <laughs>